but I want to be crystal clear about what the Online Harms Act does not do. It does not undermine freedom of speech. It enhances free expression by empowering all people to safely participate in online debate. Well, friends, we knew it was coming, but it's finally here. Justin Trudeau's biggest attack on us and free speech and you ever. It's his single largest piece of internet censorship legislation. It's his long promised online hate law, and it's going to control everything you see and say on the internet under threat of criminal prosecution, up to life in jail and extreme financial penalties. It's called Bill C-63, and the Liberals have turned it into a poison pill law because while it censors everyday Canadians, right in the middle of it, the Liberals have shoehorned in online child safety protections. So the Liberals will now argue, if you don't allow them to censor everybody on the internet, you don't care about protecting exploited children. It's so cynical and so disgusting. And there are already laws for that. The Liberals could continue to legislate on those issues without controlling everybody else. But that's the real goal here. This is about going after Trudeau's online critics, including me and Rebel News, and of course, all of you. We join allies like the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Australia, who have also legislated in this area. We have learned from their experiences. We cannot tolerate anarchy on the internet. The cost is too great. The safety, the mental health, and even the lives of our kids and our most vulnerable are at stake. I'm confident with the Online Harms Act in law, we can build safe online communities where our kids can flourish, where illegal hate is contained, and where citizens can fully engage in rigorous debate without fear of being targeted by threats, by violence, or by hatred. This work is just beginning. This law creates not one, not two, but three bureaucracies of censorship. There's the Digital Safety Commission, the Digital Safety Ombudsman, and the Digital Safety Office. It creates a new and unique hate crime offense for those guilty of uttering hate speech, which they have yet to define in the legislation. Right now, hate is an aggravating factor when considering punishment, but it's not a specific crime. We've got a plan to fight back. Go to stopthecensorship.ca, sign the petition right now, and if you can, drop a donation there, because I think we're in for the largest fight for free speech in modern Canadian history. Here's what we know so far, and I should note that this applies to social media, streaming platforms, and even adult content. There's a new, as I said, standalone hate crime offense that would apply to every offense in the criminal code and any other act in Parliament, allowing penalties of up to life imprisonment to denounce and deter, as the Liberals say, hateful conduct as a crime in itself, rather than an aggravating factor to help determine an appropriate sentence. Here's what the law is going to do. It's going to raise the maximum punishments for the four hate propaganda offenses from five years to life imprisonment. Yes, through the thinking of uh, extending the maximum sentence on inciting genocide uh, to life in prison, is that too much? What I would say to you is that we put a lot of thought into many aspects of this bill. There's a, an aspect that deals with uh, the commission that's being created, and there's aspects that deal with the criminal law. We are creating a new freestanding hate crime offense. We are en enhancing the penalties, as you mentioned, for the hate crime offenses that exist currently. And we are also ensuring that a peace bond could be procured for somebody who there's a reasonable likelihood will create a hate crimes offense. There's a new peace bond designed to prevent hate propaganda offenses and hate crimes. It also adds a definition of hatred to Section 319 of the Criminal Code to help people, as the Liberals say, understand what hatred means and what it does not mean. But so far, they haven't defined it. They're also putting hate speech back into the Human Rights Code, which means that you could be financially compensated or forced to financially compensate someone whose feelings have been hurt by what you posted online. The new provisions will specify that posting hate speech online is discrimination. The new provisions will also so-called empower people to file complaints against the person posting the so-called hate speech at the Human Rights Commission. The new law will also allow the Human Rights Tribunal to adjudicate disputes and order the poster of the so-called hate speech 
to remove the hate speech, again, undefined, and compensate the victims identified in the hate speech of up to $20,000. We're going to have a more in-depth analysis of the implications of the new online harms law for you and for us, but right now we need to make sure that your voice is heard. Please go to stopthecensorship.ca right now, sign that petition, and if you can donate to our legal fund, which I think is going to be the legal fund for free speech for all Canadians, you can do that there too. That's at stopthecensorship.ca. For Rebel News, for now, I'm Sheila Gunreed. Justin Trudeau has come to kill Rebel News, and he's going to use his brand new piece of censorship legislation, the online harms law, to do it. To stand for free speech, for you and for me and for Rebel News, please go to stopthecensorship.ca. Sign that petition, and if you can, make a donation to our legal fund.